Barshins is brought to you by our awesome patrons. Thanks for supporting the channel. Barshins! Hello, everybody, and welcome to Barshins. Hello, Stuart. Hello, Barry. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm, I'm feeling. I'm feeling sensual. I'm feeling. <laughs> I'm warming. Oh, no worries. You're, how are you warming in this room with well, some zero air conditioning? Story there, yeah. <laughs> because we basically were here recording a podcast yesterday. We're in the YouTube space in London, and it turns out to raise the temperature in the room, they have to raise a support ticket, like you do when you've lost your car insurance policy documents online. The, this in the is chat room. frustrating because it got so cold yesterday. We had really closed body language with the guests. We were like, oh yeah, that's yes. interesting. <laughs> yes. If you see the pod with Julie McDowell, the lady that can taste words and likes new clear bombs. But, well, I don't think she liked them. I think it was yeah. kind of a horrifying fear of them oh, more than right. liking, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They I did some uh, research and it's not good. Can you Just, confirm yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah. Nuclear war is still bad. Yeah, yeah. it's still yeah. bad, guys. We, We're happy to confirm that. Yeah, yes. yeah. I feel that's non-controversial. Not a good thing. Yes. Yeah. We can now put a citation mark on it. Nuclear war is bad. We can, citation. yeah. <laughs> so we've come in this morning, it's basically been like a fridge. Yeah. And But what he said, I've raised a support ticket in 20 minutes, so as we begin this, we were going to do the pod in our hoodies. Uh, we're carrying on as we are. Uh, yep. should, the temperature should elevate, just like the room temperature as we have a guest. The third body in the room. A guest? But yes. who is this guest, Barry? This is Bradley. Bradley? Hello, Bradley. Hello, Stuart, and hello, Barry. Hello, nice hello, to meet sir. you, Bradley. Thank you for coming along. Thank you for having me and accepting my swarms of money to be here. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, on that note, why is Bradley here, Stuart? Bradley? <laughs> why are you here? <laughs> Get out! <laughs> 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 Bradley backed our film, Ashens and the Polybius Heist, coming soon. Um, I didn't say our film. I'm like, I'm yeah. Not. I, I think I'm, I, I, I am mean, in it. I, I mean, kind of me and Riyadh. But yeah, Riyadh isn't here at the minute, yeah, yeah. so that was weird. Um, Riyadh's standing today. <laughs> yeah. he, backed, he backed me. He did, and one of the perks was you could come on Barshans. Yeah. And it's bloody happened. And here he is. Yeah. Where have you come from, Bradley? Uh, I have come from the lovely land of Sheffield, Sheffield. the crowning jewel of in the north. I've never <laughs> been to Sheffield, have you? I have been to Sheffield a couple of times. I went there with work years ago and had a vaguely supernatural experience. Ooh! And by vaguely, I mean not at all. It was completely explained, but it was weird. Okay. Mm. Shall we uh, start with a shot and then maybe talk Let's. about that and then uh, delve into Bradley's life? <clears throat> Today's article is brought to you by... Ugh, the Daily Mail. Ooh. I apologise to all humans. Right, <clears throat> apparently... I say apparently because Daily Mail. Mother buys blue B&Q cabinet only to peel off protective film three years later to discover it's grey. <laughs> three years later? <laughs> oh, my God. So I'm guessing this is that film they put over stuff yeah. to protect it in transit. Yeah. And she's just, oh, I like that colour. Left it on. <laughs> then one day a bit of it was peeling off. She's like, oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> just <laughs> so keep going like, on. So yeah, like, just oh. bring back the raw, honest wood. Oh, it's a nice... <laughs> if it's a cabinet and it's been protective filmed, why was it protective filmed within the cabinet? Surely if you were going to do that, it would save material to cover over the shelves and the bits you can go You would into. think so. Yeah. I can only assume it was one you had to build at home, so they had to cover uh, all the bits separately. Yeah, they tend to come with like a blue sellotape glossy thing. So, that you yeah. just, yeah. It is it's hard a, to get off as is. well, isn't it, quite yeah, often? Yeah. yeah, you need to get a little blunt table knife. I'll tell you something I hate. When you go around somebody's house and they've still got like the protector over the rope control for the television. Have you ever seen that? Oh, yeah. And there's like a sticker on it, and they're like, oh, yeah, I've always left that on. It's all got filth under it, and it's all... Oh. On a remote control? A TV yeah. remote? It's not so common these days. They tend to put them in plastic bags. The, ho the holster that it goes in, or, or the... No, no, the remote itself. Oh, so they, like, laminate their off. own remote control? <laughs> yeah. Holster? Yes, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I think we do need this... Uh, <laughs> you have a holster for your remote control? Well, that's what... <laughs> I was... I think it was called something like that before. I mean, we had my mum had this thing on the side of her chair. In fact, oh. we should have done that when we did the podcast. It's a little thing where we could like to sort of tuck the remote control in, so you never lost it down the back of the sofa or in your shoe or in the back of your jeans clever. or something. Yeah, yeah. I have a cross between Chewbacca from Star Wars and a potato that you can put remote controls in. Um, oh, I thought you were talking yeah. about a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Crossed in which way? Is it top, hard, bottom, half? <laughs> yeah. um, a sort of half and half entirely through the entire unit. Ah, okay. I, th I think I did a video. Did, did we do a video on it yeah, once, Alec? Did. It's yeah. horrible. Yeah, <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> There's a thing he remembers. The whole Star Wars thing with Alec and his Boba Fett belt. I'm still loving that. That was a good one. Yeah. My God. So the, the, amazingly, they've put bullet points because apparently this story needed bullet points. Okay. Kaylee Greer, 35, bought the £150 cabinet in the summer of 2016 as a TV stand. 
Right. She'd wanted a grey one, but was forced to buy a blue one, as it was all they had. She wanted a grey one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My dreams have finally come true. <laughs> so, it, okay. The mother of three was stunned when she peeled back protective layer of blue. She discovered it had been grey all along, to the delight of her and her husband. Wow. I am so, delighted. Yes, dear. That's, I imagine that's I wonder how if it the went. colour faded in any way over the three years, or if... I don't know. It probably, well, it wouldn't yeah. be. It's being protected, isn't it? It's like having its own sort of glossy... But the protector wasn't protected, so that could have lost Oh, yeah. Could, uh, yeah. Maybe yeah. this is what happened. <laughs> Something not... I'm trying to go through it, but it's literally all it's done is um, repeat the bullet points with more words so yeah. far. Yeah, that's good. Because apparently that's journalism these days. Yeah, and SEO, um, folks. Yeah. Any of you uh, SEO writers out there? Oh, yes. Add yeah. it out. Yeah, repeat things three times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. get your ads in there. Uh, blah, 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 blah. The couple noticed some protective tape along the top of each drawer, but decided to leave it in place. Okay. okay, so that was holding on some of the blue. So they knew I yeah, there. yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting confused. Normally, there's a bit of a reach around over the like the lip of the uh, 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 wrong word so to use there. But, so, um, yeah. the, we know what you meant. Uh, the front of the cupboard, so you have to just pick it. Up. But like I say, it's really hard to get it off. You've got to get that initial bit of traction, and once it comes, yep. boom! And then you get a massive static buildup off of it. As That's well. true, and yeah. you can send your electro from Spider Man for a short period so of time. Like, Wee! Yeah, not that I've seen Spider Man. How- <laughs> Spider Man. I don't good. know who Electro he is. He climbs walls. He, he? He's like an old. Oh God! There was a version of him in one of the films. It was a bad film. Right. Bad film. Let's move swiftly on. Yeah. Uh, however, last weekend, Kaylee was doing a deep clean of the house and decided to remove the tape. Kaylee, as national sales manager, just repeating a name there, started to peel the tape away, and it came off in a blue plastic film that had been over the entire chest of drawers. I quite like that. It's a kind of like a nice story. She's waited three years for it to mature. It's like a fine cheese. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> cheese butt. Oh, sorry, Alec. Oh, yeah. Every time. That also has the advantage that three years later it is roughly within the quality it would have been yes. had she peeled yes. it off initially. That's, yeah. that's going to be brand spanking new. That's and, uh, three extra years yeah. she's got out of this. Yeah. That's amazing. Incredible. Yeah, it's, again, it's just repeating the same thing over and over. The bedroom is grey and silver, so the cabinet actually matches it better now. It's like we've got a brand new piece of furniture. And we haven't spent a penny. Is that like I've got family photos in the article and stuff like See, that? Oh, yeah, loads Just of... posing with the unit. We're now down to the fourth time of repeating the same points as well. This is quite astonishingly right. written. Um, well, the Daily Mail tend to do that, didn't they? they sort of copy and paste and... Uh... You know, oh, and there's some oh, sponsored ads down there. Yeah, sponsored ads. It's all bunion ads again. Oh, we love a bunion. Yeah. We love a bunion here on Barsha. Is bunion <laughs> the one where it's like automatically generated and it's essentially just lies, lies and slander? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Automatically generated as opposed to manually generated. <laughs> <laughs> Your bunion. <laughs> oh, there we are. Have a, a bidding one. war for a bunion. Yes, oh. I would like one clickbait <laughs> about Nicolas Cage <laughs> <laughs> on eBay. My but, God. Yeah, there's nothing else. The husband thinks it's amazing. He prefers the cabinet now to before. Well, because it's still been the same cabinet all along. It's well, just, yeah, it's just been bit, protected uh, for longer, yeah, really. Yeah, a bit of big blue tape. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think they'll now peel off the uh, grey veneer in three years <laughs> to reveal that it's <laughs> just wood? They're like, yeah, oh, they wow. just keep going and yeah. shipping it back. Underneath and it's hot pink. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Be, um, it's like a gobstopper. You just keep pulling away layers. Yeah. Yeah. Or oh, there'll be a uh, Star Wars reference, I don't know if you've seen it, Han Solo, like that. If uh, <laughs> you see? Hey. I only know that because I've got a silicon mould of him. Uh, for an ice cube tray, if I ever want to do it. Oh, have you yeah. used that yet? No. You, you, did you use a Death Star mould? Yes, mold? I have you one did, of those. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, but yeah, I've got lots of silicon mould. What's your weirdest silicon mould? Um, I don't know about weirdest. I've got my favourite one is the Back to the Future one. I've got like loads of it's like loads of random like things from Back to the Future. Like it's got the number plate and stuff. But obviously, when you pour chocolate in, it finds its way so neat, and you pop it out, and it's pu- you got pop the it out, out of time license plate. Yeah, and yeah, all stuff. that stuff. Yeah, yeah so that's pretty cool. It makes sense if that's for chocolate. I was initially thinking ice, where it would just turn out into a big grey cube, and it's like I've been charged for a slightly <laughs> mouse shaped ice. Cube. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. And it all slightly expands, so you can't even see anything on it whatsoever. Here's yeah. a d- thing actually that I was thinking. About. You know when you go to a restaurant and you go, right, I want... Uh, and you go, oh, would you like some water? Uh, yes, sir. Sorry. <laughs> ah, <laughs> racist <laughs> restaurants. Right, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll try to do another... Uh, Hello, would you like to go to the uh, water? And then instead of going for like... Um, <laughs> Fluoride is <laughs> back. Fluoride is back. <laughs> 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 the restaurant business that I have. <laughs> I was thinking you can't be racist against a country that doesn't exist, which yeah, that accent seemed yeah. to be. That, okay. that was somebody who'd lived most of his life in China and then got over to Wales <laughs> yeah, for a few yeah. years. Yeah. Just like Philly. <laughs> Fog or something. Um, so yeah, you know you go order like, oh, would you like uh, some water? And you're like, oh no, you know, make sure you just ask for tap water because it's mm. free or legally whatever. And they go, oh no, I have the, I'll have a bottled water. See, so, you know, I'm acting now, ladies and gents that are just listening. Like so you're it. pouring out the water, and then they're like, oh, do you want some ice? Yeah, and then they got, they've made ice. Where's the ice come from? Huh? 
What? What is it? Is it? I don't know why I started talking about this. But <laughs> is the ice like from their tap? Do you know what I mean? So you've paid for this nice oh, organic, wow. made off the fountains of a unicorn's back and all this other this stuff. Is, yeah. And then you've just got like tap from the ice made from their tap the night before. I don't know. Or do they bite in bulk? Maybe. I remember reading a story many years ago of a KFC in China that uh, the Chinese authorities jumped on because everyone was getting horrified food poisoning from it. Yes. <laughs> Come on, guys. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Rampage. Jeez, Stop yeah. hell. <laughs> <laughs> Just hundreds of civil servants all around <laughs> Don't come in, you'll get food poisoning. Uh, Stamp it to the ground. And they found out what it was, was um, in order to save money, the franchise owner was serving perfectly good drinks and food and that, but the ice he was getting out of like the cistern for the toilet because it was cheaper. Oh. You don't want to confuse it with those little urinal cakes that are roughly the same size. Oh, no. Yeah, that's it. No, the worst lemon sweets going. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of toilet ducking there. You know, it might be yeah, a, bit a, bit a, bit a sh- sh- Probably stop people getting so ill. Yeah. But yeah, because the um, water system used for that is much less regulated than, you know, the drinking one in China. Yeah. I've, I've, so you, we touched uh, Bradley's from Sheffield. Uh, you've been there. I have. And I've been to Sheffield. Yeah. I've never, <laughs> Who else would say that? Except most yeah. people in the UK. I've never yes. been there. I've been left out. But you yeah. had a spiritual moment. Kind of. So. Okay. This, is this, this is a story. Yep. Wait, there was a, I might have told this before. I can't remember. Upon actually. our first meeting. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I may have told this at the Barshans one where we did ghost stories. Actually, I can't remember. Uh, but it probably didn't end up in the edit because it's boring. It's okay. only a <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait for it. No. Eventually, so it'll get in. Yeah, if, yeah, we, if I keep saying one day we'll get this bloody story yeah. in a video. Shots called. Um, what a guy who went to Sheffield. <laughs> <laughs> looks exactly like me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Uwit Starshin. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me with a big Uwit false Starshin. moustache. That's amazing. <laughs> what country is that from? Uwit Starshin. Estonian. There we go. I don't know why it's Estonian. Like I want a sci fi hero. It Uwit does. Starshin. <laughs> Traveller of the Milky Way. That's my Star Wars name. <laughs> if I was ever like an X Wing pilot, that's what they would. Uh, well, that's just like me when I've gone over to France on a a French exchange trip and I'm trying to find a restaurant called Starshans. Où est Starshans? Où est le Starshans? Où est le Starshans? When you're speaking French, do you always do that? Yeah, I think that might be about 80% of your trouble in community. Yeah, I think that's what I said. We had like French students when I was growing up and it was always like, you know, I learned, you know, I've been told that's a very good non-racist French accent. Who am I? My friend Pascal. I had a problem for a brief while where I got this idea in my head that I was going to try and teach myself Swedish because I was like, what's a useless language that I can go to one country and speak? Oh, yeah. And it was Swedish. And the app I was using to teach it, the voice back talked like Swedish chef. Oh. <laughs> so I was like, surely this is such a stereotype and like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, really? this is, I'm trying not to do that but because <laughs> that's the one Swedish influence I know as a Westerner. Yeah. And this is teaching me as if I'm supposed to speak like Swedish chef. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to know if that'll work. There's only one way to find out. Yeah. Get, drop us an email next time you're in Sweden and let's know how it went. Yeah. So what God. was your spiritual work? Uh, or was it boring? Um, yes, it is boring. I'm going to tell you anyway. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Please. Uh, do sit down. Um, so, yeah, in Sheffield years ago for work, and I was there with some quite dull people, and because we worked for a pensions company, and it got to late in the evening, I was like, yeah, well, I'm just going to go back to the hotel now. So I walked back to the hotel through late night Sheffield, and um, that's the show. Yeah, <laughs> late night Sheffield, <laughs> the back streets. Yeah. Um, so I'm walking back to this hotel, and I went past this abandoned church. Um, with all like, bricked up windows that we walked past on the way into the um, office as well. And walking past it at night, and I suddenly went, oh, because I thought I saw like somebody in an old monk's hood, like just standing right up against the railings away from this church facing out the street, oh, like yeah. pressed right up against it. And I was like, oh, God. oh wait, it's just a bush. Was it really? Oh, oh, God. So I walked a few steps closer, then realized it wasn't a bush. It was literally somebody in, a, but it said it was one of those anorak, Parker anoraks, the hood, yeah. just standing right against the fence. Stone. Going out like that. Wow. And it was just like, what? Because I, I was kind of, oh no, it's fine. Oh my God. <laughs> it's not like a ghost of a monk, but it's some freaky man in a park. Does that happen a lot in Sheffield? Or? Yeah, well, it's this big thing. Hoodies hanging around in unusual locations for no other purpose than to just be there. Like, that's what you do in Sheffield. You just go to a place to be there because there's not much else to actually do. This will oh. explain a lot. It was <laughs> yeah. kind of a proto-hoodie because it was before hoodies were a thing and it was just like a Parker jacket. Um, but then the next day, as, as I was telling the people this as we walked in and past the church, I said, oh, bloody hell, there's some bloke into the thing. Kind of. It wasn't by <laughs> facing it. But there were about five or six people all dressed identically in dark parkas with the hoods up, just moving like big bags of bricks around in the church. So I don't know if they're doing like renovation or it <laughs> yeah. was... Yeah, or I don't know. 
know, um, yeah. some sort of publicly mandated thing they'd done for being criminals or something. I got no right. idea, but it was all Blimey. very uh, community service. That's the term I was thinking of. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was odd. All right, okay. Well, Told you it was that crap. was spiritual, though. It's more like a, that's just a nutter. Yeah. <laughs> that's the closest I get. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, Bradley, you've come down from Sheffield then? And yep. like, came down last night? I uh, came down this morning. I did got you? off the train. Wow. In theory, I walked right to the YouTube space. In reality, I did a huge lap of pretty much every possible street except the one that YouTube space is on. What, in the whole of London? Yeah, that, that's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> much traditional. It takes a while. But yeah, yes. I say this morning. This was like one in the morning. Really? Right? <laughs> I was to do a walking tour of the city. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's... Well, welcome to London. Uh, so... Thanks for coming on board. We've got a few little uh, stats about you. You're single and still living with your parents because millennial. Yeah, mm. um, it's hard when you're 22 and when you're 22 in the first world. It's just so yeah. hard to get out there nowadays. Oh, no, no. no. <laughs> I miss those days. <laughs> uh, you went to university in York? Yeah. You're now back in Sheffield. Well, I've never been to York either. I feel so under-traveled. York. I've been to York. York Have is you? a yeah. gorgeous city. Can you sell me York in four words? A very pretty York place. <laughs> say, it's a gorgeous city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you actually, Bradley's already done it. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's got a massive cathedral in it. It does. Okay. Oh. That's, it's got lots of cocktail bars as well. Does it? Oh, so I, I, I do like a cocktail. It's a student place where the primary drink of choice is cocktails. Right. Which sort of gives you... Because it's a very student-heavy town, like pretty much any with a big university slap in the middle of it is. Mm -hmm. I say town, it's a city. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I said the giant cathedral. But it's very cocktail-y, so everyone's a little bit more fruitful and it's kind of people who get rejected from Oxford okay uh, <laughs> poor man's Oxford so it's the, it's the second tier of Oxford is it quite metallic <laughs> well it's, it's the steel city and yeah that's like, it that's people, what I meant people yeah. are quite surprised <laughs> that there is still a steel industry like it, it used to be like back in the war it was like Sheffield Steel is where mm. it's at and yeah. it still is like one of the big employers up there but it's all very niche steel now because right. we don't make things out of steel anymore. Now we've got carbon fibre. Tin, tin foil. <laughs> yeah, Sheffield's still going with steel. <laughs> right, well, yeah, that's it. It's called the, the steel yeah. city. Yep. It's going to make a comeback. Steel. Yeah. <laughs> you heard it here first. Steel. Everything's going to be steel in three years. Why is this television so heavy? <laughs> Entirely steel. Yeah. Oh, why has never been like a, a rock star called Steel? It's a strong name. Isn't I, it? I, I literally looked immediately at Alec as soon as you said rock yeah. star. It's, like, like, it's been Seal, obviously. I worry you get halfway between Sting and Seal. And I'm yes, not sure that's, that's what I'm thinking. Oh, Tommy, Tommy Steel. Tommy right, Steel, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's probably the best one. There's a band called Steel Panther. Steel, Steel Panther. Oh, yeah. That's a strong name. Yeah. Okay. Uh, your work history, where you have worked. I, the strangest story in my working history so far is that I worked I really for a day it. as a zombie for hire at a zombie experience event that turned out the long run to be a money laundering scheme. We, we need to hit every detail of this. This sounds fantastic. <laughs> so this was when I was in first year of sixth form. So I think I was 16, 17, which I'm not sure what the labour laws in this country are, but I, I think you can work at 16. Yep, it's my but understanding. We, we were on the young age to be working. And my friend came into school one day and was like, there's a zombie experience set up uh, down... I have no idea of a geography of my own city. <laughs> Say down. <laughs> and, Across. Yeah, Across. like they'll, they'll turn up, they'll pay you... You have to go for free for the first few days... And then you get paid after you've dedicated your comeback and be a zombie multiple times. And you're getting paid. It's entirely cash in hand, which is should have been the first alarm bells that this is <laughs> not an entirely above board operation. But you turn up, they'll paint you up like a zombie. And then you just let out into this abandoned industrial estate. And then groups of like, it was almost like stag and hen parties and work do outings. They would come up and just fire at you with BB guns for about, I think it was about two hours was each session. They'd do it about four times a day. I only went for one session because I could not deal with being pelted with BB guns. My friend uh, friend Tom went back multiple times enough to start getting paid. But BB and guns was, are quite hard hitting from close range, aren't they? Yeah, it was, it was a magical experience where you turn up, you get painted in zombie makeup, and they say, they can, we can give you an eye mask. That was about all they had on yeah. stock to sort of protect the people being zombies. It's the new so, product yeah. from Apple. <laughs> <laughs> so I took, like Steve yeah. Jobs. It's got I took a mask to protect my eyes, but apart from that, I was just basically dressed as I am now, showing quite a lot of skin. <laughs> And just people with like quite heavy duty BB guns as well, not like BB pistols, running around this abandoned industrial estate, which had not been made safe at all. <laughs> wow. This was a legitimately like, this had been lots of buildings, like factory floors and offices that have not been touched in about a decade and a half. And like there was like plants growing everywhere and like shattered glass all over the place. And the floor was covered in BB pellets because they didn't have anyone to like go and get the pellets after you'd been shot at. You were told as a zombie, if there's no people shooting you around, pick them up, pocket them bring them back at the end of the day. Which is, so they're just being pellets everywhere and everywhere. So it's really slippery wow. by the yeah. sounds of it, basically. <laughs> and you're basically told, sent in, make a bunch of zombie noises. When you get shot, sort of fall down and like go, ah. 
and then <laughs> the guy yeah. that came up with that idea. <laughs> so, when, yeah. when they're out of range, get back up, move somewhere else, get shot again. I think it might have been a catch of a flag event where the party was supposed to get to one end and come back, but I didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a magical experience of where you walk up, full zombie gear, then a gr- group of quite scared like young men and women walk around the corner all of pistols and just go zombie <laughs> <laughs> dozens of bullets just pelting you over and over again so you go ah fall to the ground in semi-real pain yeah <laughs> then one of them yeah, yeah. And then you fall down one of them just goes is he alright so you just have to completely break tone and just go I'm good <laughs> <laughs> oh wow yeah. so how does it work out as a money laundering scheme well, yeah. well so we all paid cash in hand right and it was I'm trying to remember what, I think it was you get paid for ten pound a session. Okay. Which come out under minimum wage, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> but then I went once, got horrifically shot at, and was like, "You know what, fam? Respect it, but it ain't for me." Friend Tom kept going back and back, and he turned up to school and just like lift his shirt and show, just like covered in pock marks. And it was like he's like a seventeen-year-old who wow. was like they didn't ask for his parents' permission or anything. They just <laughs> <laughs> turned up and was like, "You willing to work? Yep, have fun." And like this industrial state was not cordoned off either. Like, you could just walk off of it and then they'd just be used industrial estate. Where it's like, oh, yeah. no, there's a man in a business suit. I'm going to turn back. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. And um, you could have had just members of the public walking through it normally, walking the yeah. dog or something. Yeah, like one of these, like, travel YouTubers where you go to, like, abandoned locations. Turn up and was like, oh, my goodness, zombies. <laughs> 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 Run. Yeah. It was a horror film in that. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Well, and then, like, after about seven or eight months... Tom turned up and was like, uh, well, went to him and was like, oh, you're going to do the zombie thing this Saturday. I was like, oh, no, the guy's just not responding to any emails. And we just got bounced back saying no longer a valid email address. Next day he came into school and was like, yeah, he's been arrested. And he was just, he was using us to get the money out of the, his unclean money laundered out of the system. And then all the money that the stag and hen party is in replacing it, him making a profit out of it. Which explained why it was such a slapped up operation as in he probably just found an abandoned industrial estate that was like so out there that nobody like the police were ever going to check what was going on and just advertise it to stag and hen dudes to shoot a, a bunch of people who'll just turn up and be zombies with no paper trail for it. <laughs> what an incredible, very inventive money laundering scheme. Yeah, isn't that it, is, you know? yeah. But it lasted a few months as opposed to several days that most would-be ge- like criminal geniuses would go for. Yeah. I wonder if it's even allowed to be using the land as well. <laughs> it's just saying it's a bit <laughs> Almost like, certainly not, yeah. I would have said by the same. Yeah, and it was yeah. like so yeah. abandoned. Like one of the, I remember quite vividly, it was like a set of rotating doors that were completely jammed shut and shattered. <laughs> so in theory, you were supposed to go through the shattered glass to get the in. Shattered glass. <laughs> thankfully, what could go wrong? Yeah, thankfully, this was a modern enough abandoned industrial estate to just have a side door, though, right, like yeah, a disabled yeah. entrance that was also open. Yeah. You'd go in, there'd be two like big flights of stairs, one of which just completely collapsed down. Oh. And the other one was, nobody went on it because, yeah, because the other yeah, one had been collapsed. Yeah. I mean, you get people like, there were other ways around the top on this big balcony thing. Where you're just supposed to, like, we're just tons and tons of, like, old bat boxes that are degraded barrels and just BB pellets everywhere. Was, wow. Yeah. I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> I kind of wanted to have seen that. It was tremendous fun being a yeah. zombie. I'll give it that. He yeah. found a fun way of getting his illegal money clean. So wow. the principle is, he's got dirty money from dodgy enterprises, pays <laughs> you guys that money to get it out of his system, yeah. and then the money that comes in from the Hindus is the clean money, yeah. and then has a paper trail. Hence money God. laundering. Yeah. 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 Well, I need to there speak to my accountant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's also, that I've got a great, great idea. <laughs> there was a great moment as well where um walked into one of these big sort of, it was like an office floor with like loads of pillars in it, but it was just completely dead empty. And me and some guy who I didn't know was also wandering around as a zombie. We should have got their names because they were... You've got to be an interesting person to sign up for. <laughs> where we heard them right at the other end, like around the corner, going like, oh, where are they? Because it was relatively dark. This was like 12 o'clock, but it was a, like wintry, autumny time. I was like, got a plan. There's a big stack of tyres next to us. So we got one and just spun it all the way down the room. So we just heard the of rolling it and bang as it crashed against a big metal sheet that was against the wall oh. and you just heard about five screams <laughs> <laughs> going, <"Aah!"> wow. <laughs> that's quite I, I quite like to say it didn't sound like that I mean they do more organised stuff that does sound a yeah. bit rogue what you've done oh, it's, a, it's a fantastic business idea it's yeah. a shame that a slightly shady Stuart's man writing his in his phone now. yeah, yeah. <laughs> money <laughs> laundering yeah. ideas just <laughs> that, add that to the bottom yeah. of the list yeah. 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 that Ash's yeah. zombie yeah. playlist starting add a soon. massive fence and clean up all the broken glass and you, yeah and, yeah, and, and clean up the BBs a bit I suppose yeah 
Yeah, bloody hell. That's so how it. long did this guy get in prison? What was he done for? We don't know the story of what happened to him. We know he oh. was arrested, but Tom was just like, I'm going to distance myself as much as possible by just going with the, I was paid for this, I'm young, I'm just going to leave and pretend nothing happened. <laughs> that is probably, yeah. yes. So it's kind of like a jizzed up version of um, Kiss Chase in a way. Did, did you mean jazz? Uh, jazz. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that took about four words. <laughs> yeah. A jizzed up version of Kiss Chase. Jazzed Two words. That, that's, you're not going to launder any money doing that. That's crikey. A up no, let's don't go down there. That's a, that's a porn film. Yeah, that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Oh, porn zombie um, experience. Yeah. Like, well, I've caught you now. Giant handled Mamba Stockton and each zombie. Yeah. <laughs> Kiss Chase was a very pointless game there on that topic well was it what's the point of it it's unfortunately to... a reference over my head oh really you never played kiss chase when you were younger at school like proper... it's probably been banned did you ever play kiss chase uh, i think it was banned from our <laughs> was reason, oh, yeah right. um, um, but that specifically by the school and... yeah bulldog was very popular in? bulldog was banned yeah. right at the height of its peak oh, oh, oh they, they could get quite 40 violent. 40 in you ever play that i can't no. remember the extract was that rules of that um yeah stuck in the mud was another one there we go um i think you brought a gift with you didn't you yes i have brought presents for both of you ah. you do not have to share there is a pair okay. each oh, i have okay. brought a book from a man i love and a book from a man i love who is me ah, okay. <laughs> well, you're, pub you're published all for them well self-published it's not yeah that will still works <laughs> yeah like, it, it's, it's a book we can read it yeah it's you can go on amazon plus it's spawn the bible's the bible <laughs> self-published it. isn't it the first one potentially <laughs> there's it, definitely something wrong with that my brain is it, racking through all yeah, the points yeah, in your argument I, I, it's going, I, it's, no. yeah, it's if, you think, if you think about it no <laughs> the very really. first version was a self-published novel before Amazon <laughs> <laughs> so, so I've now learned that the Bible is a novel well, and it was self-published well, yeah, Barry the next time they print a copy of the Bible can you do the foreword <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the King James yeah. Bible forward yeah. by Barry Lewis <laughs> I, yeah, I was very very taken in by the emotional return of Mr Spock after you thought he was yeah, dead yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it yeah. Yeah. sorry but yes I me. Yeah. Yes. Yep. As I said beforehand, <laughs> Stuart, you struck me as a man who has read House of Leaves. Do you know, I haven't. I have a copy, but I've yet to read House of Leaves. I would, mm. I'd recommend you read that first. It's by the okay. same author, Mr. Mark Z. Surname. Da Daniel Lusky. <laughs> Do you want to have a go at that Daniel surname? Daniel Lusky. That's probably a good Sun. Guy, actually. <laughs> Daniel Sun, yes. Uh, Mr. Dan. Show us book yeah, on, yeah. book off. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and also the book by me, short story I wrote, instead of revising for my exams. Ah. <laughs> and what exams were they? Uh, this was a maths exam, Ooh. Introduction to Number Theory. Ooh, crikey. Which, as, as the words introduction blatantly lied, it required quite a lot of pre-reading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. This is yeah. the introduction, yeah. It was an exam yeah. I went into, walked yeah. out of a 24% and was like, damn, I did good. Right. Considering I just spent all my time writing a book. Yeah, yeah. And this is called... Yeah. Uh, it's called Heartmender. Heartmender. Okay, yeah. nice. Uh, it has the greatest blurb in history. Uh, Bradley isn't sure why you're reading this. Oh, really? Because <laughs> I'm honestly not sure why anyone would read it. It's not great. And what, and what, can you summarise Heartmender? A bit like York in, uh, in four words. <laughs> uh, young me gets out angst. That's five words. No, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's one of those... It's a story that makes me sound not quite bad, but a story that starts making me sound quite bad and then it's quite nice at the end. So oh. I wrote it at the time where there was a girl I was very much infatuated with mm. and then she let slip in conversation that she had a boyfriend. Oh. And I had that that sort of weird contradiction of like, I'm happy you're happy. Yeah. But also like, damn. <laughs> yeah. And then I thought back to a time, this was when I was 20 this happened. Then I thought back a few years earlier where roughly the same thing happened and I went full teen melodrama. It's like the world hates me. <laughs> <laughs> and just that contrast between like, 16 year old me having a minor emotional breakdown because a girl is happy and then 20 year old me being like, yeah, okay. That was quite an interesting contrast. So I thought I'd write a book that sort of plays with that. Mm. So it's a book about someone who gets dumped in that sort of way, okay. then decides to write about, the character decides to write about a world where he was successful. Ah. And then that successful story starts writing itself in the background while he's living his life. Cool. So his life is going to shit, essentially. Can we swear? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and while this fictional, within fiction life, is going fantastically. And it's about, I won't spoil the ending for you, it's about 140 pages. So you can okay. get it done in a sitting. Yeah. I'd recommend it if you want a one sitting book that is of six out of ten quality. Okay. <laughs> it's oh, not uh, great. That's, I'm that's not above average. Uh, I'm happy. I have yeah. a train ride home later. I'll, I'll, uh... yeah. And The Familiar is the other book I've brought. I just love this book, man. I don't have much to say about it. I just love it. <laughs> the Familiar. So... Yeah. It's 
book one of five, they're all this big. <laughs> right. But they're... I'll put this down. Does it play a lot with the formatting and things? Yeah. I had a quick look. Yeah, so if you skim through a Mark C. Danielewski book, for the people listening, I don't know why I looked at the camera to address the people who were not using the cameras to <laughs> listen to this podcast. <laughs> We've all done it. Yeah, so it has lots of parts of blank space. It does a lot of weird things with formatting where it does weird little tricks of words and play. It's quite a playful book, Yeah, I would say. So it reads like a 500-page book. When it's, awesome. I think it caps out at just under a thousand. <laughs> I like on the front, it's like a movie title. One man's story, twice. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I love that. It, it summarises it well. Do you know what sums yeah. up Heartlander, I think? It's the kind of story where Michael Cera would play the lead act. Michael now I'm Cera. a bit, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I know. So if that yeah. sounds good to you, Michael Cera fans, <laughs> yeah. you presumably exist. It's on Amazon, is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's four pound. It's literally the cheapest I can sell it where I'm not selling it at a loss. Okay. Because I wasn't particularly interested in making a profit off of it. One, because again, not great. <laughs> oh, it's, but yeah. also because it's just something I did and was like, I've got this thing written yep. and I've got an exam I failed. So I might as well do something with it where people can read it. Right. That's awesome. It's nice dedicated to Jeff the Cat as well. Yes. Oh, that's it. The lovely like Jeff it. Just like the Bible. Jeff the cat. You know, by, just, by God, yeah, God might have had a cat. People don't know. <laughs> Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, Jeff the cat. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, Jeff. We need to have a talk later. About how religion works. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. Quite easy going about religion. Yeah. Well, if you want to read something that is as chunky as the Bible, because books like this are fascinating. Because I, there was a YouTube video I saw by a man, Austin McConnell which went semi-viral recently about uh, Marx of the book House of Leaves, which opened with the thesis statement, the books are just boring, kind of just compared to other mediums. You've got like, you know, big CGI Star Wars adventures, mm. and VR video games and that Bars can take podcast. you. And <laughs> yeah, Bars yeah. podcast the on YouTube. Yeah. 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 And a book is just like, you know, uh, open it up, big white paper, Lots of black words. As uh, Tom Scar does in the Asdaf movie. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to do an internet. I'm going to do a book. Oh. Right, <laughs> it's right. It's less immediately fulfilling. Yeah. Whereas the, the rules of books are just aren't as tied down as people think they are. Like, what, why can't you have a book where the text just decides to go upside down to create that ah. sense of unease in you? Yeah. Because the publisher says it'll cost more. I want to release yeah. a pop-up scratch and sniff cookbook. Oh, wow. Oh, yes, because yes, there's more to a book than just blank yeah. words. Yeah. You can have pop-up scratch. That's a really good idea, yeah. yeah. You've got so, your yeah. chicken korma or whatever coming yeah, out. Yeah, it pops up so it displays the full plumage yeah. of what it should look like, and then you can scratch and sniff to get a scent of what it will be like. And then you can even have a little swab mark where you've made it, and you can stamp it with your thumb to say, that I've, like, so you stick your thumb in your korma and smudge it on your and say, I've done it. I like that. I'm only thinking, could you combine that? Publishing. (laughs) Could you combine that with some sort of strange abstract RT book? Because then you've got like an abstract narrative which is going out of the pages. Then suddenly, bonk, pineapple upside down cake. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Like porridge in our. I hope that's how the next Star Wars film ends. (laughs) (laughs) A pineapple upside down cake. Just a big food fight. Giant planet that is just a large pineapple cake. Well, go ahead. That's no moon. It's it's a cake. There's no lightsabers. No explanation. (laughs) Using baguettes instead of lightsabers. Okay, awesome. Do you work in publishing as well? I did work for publishing for two. Well, Work is quite a strong word okay. for what I did when I went to Penguin for it is. two weeks. It's a word I hate. <laughs> so I applied for an internship, a uh, two-week internship during the summer. I actually applied. This is going to be part of the reason why <laughs> I didn't was, wasn't was successful with this girl that I was oh. attempting to court because she applied for this publishing at Penguin because she really wants to get into it. I think she has gone into it, actually. Mm. And so I was like, mentioned it to me. I was like, sure, I'll apply as well. I got in and she didn't. Oh. <laughs> she was the first person I told. I was like, oh my God, I've managed to get in. It's like, <laughs> really good for you, Bradley. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm very glad. Yeah. Yes. I was like, oh. we can't, we can't <laughs> all get in, Bradley. Oh, well, it wasn't. Mm. <laughs> might explain why it didn't go through. <laughs> but I went to Penguin for two weeks and I was just an intern, basically a runner. Mm. And my deal was sit at a computer with emails open and just do whatever you're told to do for two weeks. Oh, I love that as a job. Well, mm. that is, imagine the fun you can have with that. Eight days and two half days. What a crest sandwich. <laughs> eight days and two half days. I got three requests in. <laughs> one was already waiting for me and one came in on the first day. So I did bugger all for two weeks. Pretty right. Much. So you basically had one email over two weeks to deal <laughs> yeah. with. Yeah. And but, like they were not uh, tough jobs. Like one of them was like mail out these review copies of it. I think it was a cookbook. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, okay, stick the stamp on, done. Took me 10 minutes. Came back, uh, moved this from one spreadsheet to another, done that. Oh, there was nothing on my email folder. So I just sat around. And then like on the final day, I had to deliver something to a different department. 
Right. So it was just two weeks of doing nothing. <laughs> Penguin. <laughs> wow. Like dear. burning this fantastic opportunity. Yeah. Because I think it... I was the last person to do it before they stopped doing them because it got into heavier publishing season. So they didn't want to like faff around with an intern. So I think they just sort of forgot I existed. <laughs> Which was like, I got up to some shenanigans during those days. <laughs> I did. I brought in five copies of my self-published book and hid them on bookshelves. Oh, that's the <laughs> best, best seller. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You slowly replaced all the books with your own one. And one day they're like, yeah. where three quarters of the books? Heart mender. When did this happen? <laughs> that's it. Bradley isn't sure why you're reading this. I'm not sure why I'm reading this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Was it the strange, strange story in my work? Oh, no, I've got that one. So I studied philosophy, which, as your guess, is not good at being directly applicable to jobs. However, I would passionately argue that studying philosophy is incredibly important. My university was primarily a chance to try new interesting things. Oh, so I, I completely yeah, read yeah. that out. For you, are, you are reading my scene. <laughs> yeah, I, did, I did maths and philosophy. Yeah. I wasn't lying about the intro to number theory exam. And that's uh, not a philosophy uh, course. Really. <laughs> was it, at one point, I was simultaneously a member of the darts team, appeared in pantomimes, <coughs> regularly attended philosophy society meetings, and was a secretary of the Pokemon Society. Yes. That's a hell of a combo. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm like, when I got into second year university, I had the slight crisis that I imagine all university students go through of, uh, this is almost half over. So I just applied for every society humanly imaginable, turned up for all of them, and I was like, which ones do I enjoy? Yeah. So I ended up on the darts team, I ended up wow. on the reserve team. In fact, darts has an awful story where I turned up never having played darts before. Walk up, three darts, Triple 20, triple 20. No. Everyone walks around me and it's like, oh, we've got a good one here. Oh, no. <laughs> Third dart was a triple one, which looks good since it's right oh, next to the triple 20. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, I have never done a 149. I've not even done a 100. But the rest of the time I was there. <laughs> it's like, oh, we've got a good one here. Keep an eye on him. Bonk, <clears throat> five, seven. Oh, that was off the board. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that was my... Uh, but I managed to ingratiate myself just enough where I was like, he's got potential, this one. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, I had potential. <laughs> <laughs> I blew it all yeah. on the first two darts. Yeah. But... And then pantomime as well. Pantomime was the one I got mostly ingratiated with. Right. Because pantomime attracts some weird people, which I consider myself at home with them. Right. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. I, was, yeah. I was the back half of a pantomime horse once and that, oh, was, nice. that was the absolute peak of university. Was it I, called Dobbin? Aren't they always called Dobbin or something? Frequently, I believe. It was called Dr. Horse. Dr. Horse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. much better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We haven't had a doctor in horses yet, have you? No, not yet. Yeah. I'm not coming. The way they did the pantomime horses was whoever wasn't in the scene and whoever was essentially closest to the stage wow. <laughs> during that scene was like, you, you're the horse now. Okay, I'm trying to remember my lines for the next scene. Nope, you're a horse. Have fun. <laughs> um, how does it look like when you're under the horse's outfit, when you're the one at the back? What are you... Well, this was done on a field, like a very muddy field. Okay. It had been raining quite badly the day before. So, so the other a, person yeah. at the front is... They're obviously yeah, the front of the horse's legs oh, is their nice. legs. Yeah. Where are their hands? Is the... Like, Does a horse have arms? like a penguin, they were down the side. That's oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Was well, they going where yeah. the legs are? Yeah, and I was essentially cupped around his belly button. I was basically had my fingers in his belly button the whole time. Oh, he locked with, like, it my around head like bent. That. He yeah, your head on like, his back. Because the pantomime horse was very cheap, so it wasn't very long. Yeah. So it didn't have space for me to stretch out. <laughs> and it was just a scene where it essentially walks on, goes, It's Dr. Horse. <laughs> Stand in the background for two minutes. Exit stage. <laughs> <laughs> wow. How do you like sink when you're walking in it as a horse? Like, as well? Yeah, that sounds Badly. difficult. Right. <laughs> you, you walk very slowly yeah. with yeah. another actor holding you, the person at the front and the side to go, ah. step, step. I wasn't sure if you like brace your legs together with a yeah. bit of wood or something. Like. <laughs> that would have been more efficient than yeah. how long it took it was like to a get train. stage. Be like, yeah. Do you think this is why they invented the human centipede to try and make that sort of thing easier? The film? Or... I haven't seen that. The pantomime. You'll love it. Heard, yeah. It's, it's the, the feel-good film of the decade. I've got my friend Gary who just tries to tell me about these horror movies all the time. I'm just like, oh man, no. And he's like, yeah, he loves the human centipede. The idea of a pantomime human centipede is interesting because our, oh, our university has a rule where you can't do a pantomime that at least one person in the society remembers having done, oh. which is a problem because there was a girl there who was there for like six years. So she remembered everything. It's like, oh, have we done Aladdin? Yeah, we did it when literally <laughs> nobody else in the society was here. So we started to run out of themes for pantomimes. And like the one they did this year was uh, Game of Thrones, the pantomime. <laughs> mm, it's like running sold. out of ideas. Like human centipede is on the table. <laughs> I, was, oh, God. I pitched hot fuzz at least three oh, times. Oh, no, that lends that would be itself, awesome. doesn't it? The, the yeah. opening song could be like all star. It'd be like, hey now, Sergeant Angel, <laughs> you're a big cop, go away. <laughs> That's awesome. Pokemon, Pokemon Society as well? Yeah, I was the secretary. 
Wow. I was the best text secretary that yeah. society ever had because I sent emails sometimes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Authority. Uh, but this doesn't sound like they set the bar very high. I'll be honest yeah. with you, Brent. I knew that penguin experience would come in handy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it's, it's, I had this quite high lofty vision that it would be about discussing the intellectual and philosophical implications of Pokemon. We didn't even play Pokemon. We played Mario Kart half the time. <laughs> so it was just an excuse for like about 12 or 13 people to just get in a room once a week and just go, Yep, let's play some games. So Pokemon was the theme of it because they already had a gaming society, which was very uh, hardcore gaming. Oh, yes. Wow. Whereas yeah. we were like casual gaming. We were turn up, make some memes. Oh, you don't own Pokemon? <laughs> We've got board games. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. How long ago was that? I left university last year, so it was about two years ago I was the second. Ah, so I was trying yeah. to look at how many Pokemon there would have been at the time. Uh, Pokemon Generation 7 came out while wow. I was secretary. That's How many is in a generation? Like 100 or something? There, I genuinely don't a, there's know. There's about actually. 820. Good God. Seven if only we had a Pokemon so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, but wait. <laughs> I, I say one of my forays into YouTube has been about Pokemon, so it looks like I know a lot, but in reality, I'm really good at reading Wikipedia articles. All <laughs> <laughs> ah, right. <laughs> so originally, so, there were just 150, weren't there? 151. Oh, of course, because yeah, Muse. The secret yes, one. Yeah. And then they added about 100 at a time. Oh, good God. Because... Is I, it like I, Top Trumps, Pikachu? Um, <laughs> yes. Pikachu, Pikachu <laughs> is like Top Trumps. That's correct. Yeah. It's just, I mean, you know, Pokemon... That is, that is how, that's actually a pretty... Not a terrible way of describing Pokemon yeah. to someone who knows not of it. Yeah. It's kind of like Top Trumps, but it's a bit... Right. Halfway between Top Trumps and Rock Paper Scissors. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is there a ultimate Pokemon... Is it the Pikachu? Well, I don't know. There's all these this, like. This is what I spent 20 minutes debating. Oh, my, is it? <laughs> yeah. oh, my people have very strong opinions about this. Really? Because people have very strong opinions about anything if you let them. Yeah, there's <laughs> not one with like friendship 100 or whatever. Oh, there is one that is theoretically God. Yes. Like in universe, it is like it was the only being, and then it created the universe with a thousand arms. Jeff the cat. Which yeah, it was Jeff the cat. <laughs> <laughs> with. <laughs> Then from the, a 10-year-old boy can just go and catch it and be like, well, I control the universe now. Wow. <laughs> yeah. okay. well, he, he, Ash could still catch it in his Pokeball. Yeah. Like, and you're just like, this is mine. What did now. you just catch today? Well, I got a couple of Pidgeys and I got God. <laughs> oh, well done. <laughs> what, what are you going to do with it? Oh, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it fight this Caterpie. <laughs> <laughs> God uses, <Yeah>. the, <laughs> reconstruct universe. Right? <laughs> there Caterpie is now no Caterpie. So what is that God card then? What's it called? It's called... Oh, God. It's not even. There isn't even a agreed upon pronunciation. Oh, really? That is how Ooh. much people care about this. I think it's Arceus. Oh, how's like it spelled? Arc. Oh, something. Is it like a giant bird? Because all of the rare ones are. It's they? like a goat with like. Imagine if a goat was. Climbing... <laughs> I wasn't expecting that's that. That's that's a a goat. Goat. <laughs> the goat of Mendes. <laughs> Imagine what? a goat with like a long, flowing Fabio hair. This sounds. I've got to look caught this up now. halfway through crawling through a climbing frame. <laughs> My what? God. There's a there's a game in this badly describing Pokemon yeah. and then we having someone did that draw once it. On, um, <laughs> we, we did. Yeah. There's a picture, isn't there? Oh. Yes, the picture that shit post bot three thousand spewing over Twitter yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of me jumping in dressed as Ash Ketchum while Barry looks at me with absolute <laughs> disgust on his face. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really good yeah. picture. Actually. It's a normal normal yeah. time we catch up, really. Yeah. Oh, God, what was it called again? Sorry, Arceus, spelled A R C U. Google's autocorrect. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, so, I got it. Yep. <laughs> good show. Uh, Oh, yeah. oh, God, yeah, it's a weird looking thing, isn't it? I got caught halfway through one of those climbing frames that they all had in all schools but would never bring out because it was never yeah. safe. Because <laughs> they'd put a, like an inch of rubber mat around it, be like, yeah, you can fall so on that. So that's part of his act. I don't know He's what. He's got it a is. fence stuck to it. <laughs> I think, I no, think it just was, looks like that. Oh, hang on. I'll, I think I'll that was an artist was slightly bored and was like, what's the most weird design I can come up with? Yeah, it's, it's an odd looking oh, thing. Oh, wow, okay. It's like a big white spiky bugger. Crikey, yeah. 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 It's like a, an angry snowflake. Its weakness is. Fighting. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't take well to being punched in the face, which kind of goes against the whole God thing. <laughs> right, right. Or maybe um, that is the beauty the beauty of nature. There is this all-powerful God, but a good sucker punch will take Yeah. Him. <laughs> <laughs> Swift punch is always good for... Uh, Hit anything hard enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not fighting well enough, are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You call this a universe? <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got three questions that we always ask people. Uh, have Absolutely. you ever been in a local newspaper? Sort of. Ooh, ooh. I was referenced in a local newspaper. Ah. So I was on the, I was about to say the as if I know which one. I was on a motorway coming south of like Lancaster um, when there was an accident. Everyone was fine. So it's okay for me to have a funny story out of this. Good. <laughs> but completely blocked off the motorway, complete stationary for hours. And people were just walking around outside of their cars right. in the motorway because there was nothing to do. And like everyone's phones were starting to die. So for hours and it approaching midnight, we spoke to the police who'd called us off. 
because there was a little sort of gate within the central reservation. And we said, if you can get that gate open, all the cars free to go out, back around the motorway, find an alternative way. Proceed about half an hour of the contents of 50 cars all standing ah, around this wow. metal gate trying to, trying to, to get it open. Eventually, someone bought, used their car keys to like flick the, nut, the bolt off yeah. or picked up the thing, moved the gate. Everyone made a mad sprint for their cars as everyone started driving wow. for it. <laughs> and then we got... This was in a local newspaper and they... It was heard to us, some lads got the gate open. And I am some lads. <laughs> That's awesome. There's a selfie That's a I got. That's a t-shirt. There's a I selfie I got <laughs> sitting on the top of my car because I was so bored where you can look back at all the cars behind me. And the picture in the newspaper, you can see a same car from that picture. So you can sort of triangulate where I was. Wow. And that's the closest I've been to a local newspaper. <laughs> I was some lad. <laughs> <laughs> and who's the most famous person you've ever met? Depends how you define met. Uh, Rod Gilbert tried to kick me out of a Taskmaster recording once. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> were you supposed to be on? I mean, no. <laughs> like, for warm-up guy, we were supposed to banter with the warm-up guy. And, like, we had some back and forth. And then when all the guests came on, the warm-up guy brought it up again. And Rod Gilbert was like, well, let's get him kicked out then if he's causing trouble. Because I don't think he got that it was quite a lighthearted exchange. Oh, <laughs> and wow. I was like, please, I've driven five hours to be here. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Even If that doesn't count, I met Barney Harwood when I was on Bamzuki as a kid. Oh, it's CBBC. Yeah. Ooh, that's yeah, that's yeah. beyond to be that one. Designing, yeah. like you design little sort of, it's basically Pokemon again. You design little creatures and they fight each other. So I met Barney Harwood who, right. people my age, lose their minds <laughs> and then everyone plus or minus two years doesn't care <laughs> yeah I've, I've not heard that one okay. yeah and the, rod gilbert yeah, yeah. Rod, rod, rod gilbert it's all like he does best mate uh, yeah. <laughs> most embarrassing situation you've ever been uh, when i was at university i went to a drag show and i decided to go in drag because i thought it'd be funny when and, like, in Rome. my friends were also going as in drag so it was <laughs> the embarrassing is not me turning up like that um a couple of drinks in there was like a sign-up sheet at the door and i was like Sure, I'll put my name on this. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> uh, came up later and was like, and now it's time for the audience lip sync competition. Oh, oh. pull it out like da 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 da. Bradley. I was like, oh, that's me. Oh, no. <laughs> Dragged on stage two people, full drag gear, dressed as like a slutty Wednesday Adams. Because <laughs> that was There's my an image. My God. It yeah. was Wangsday Adams. Very proud of that. Oh, oh. Yes. that's the title for this video. Yeah, Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday Adams. Adams. Yeah. Yeah. And I had to lip sync to a Taylor Swift song I didn't know. Oh. Uh, which okay. I've since learned. It is a banger. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's me going. Uh, yeah, you, you can't lip sync to something you don't know the lyrics yeah. of. Dude, that's impossible, pretty I much. Won, which was the weird thing. Because <laughs> oh, wow. like, I ended up at one point, I took the wig off and like did a whole woo <laughs> and threw it into the crowd. Oh. And I think that sort of won me over. Ah. Yeah, I'm going to make a note best. of that yeah. in case this ever comes up. Well, yeah. Yeah. A moment of me standing on stage in this awful dress that was both too tight and I'd stuffed. That's awesome. <laughs> so I felt like I was melting, just going. <laughs> Hearing the intro to a Taylor Swift song and going, well, this is three minutes of my life. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, well, thanks so much for coming on, Bradley. Yeah. Yes, uh, thank you, sir. Where can people find you other than Amazon with uh, your, your book? Yes, uh, I have a YouTube channel that is just called Bradley mm -hmm. because my marketing is atrocious. That's awesome <laughs> to get Bradley, though. So, yeah, yeah Brad, that's Now you've got to get Bradley yeah. X5 2000, which is, which is <laughs> yeah, really something much less exciting. Yeah. Yeah. X5 2000. Yeah, well, yeah I, the YouTube channel Bradley, I upload about once every two months. Okay. Uh, and one of those was a video that was like three years old. Okay. <laughs> so I'm very bad at YouTube. Uh, on Amazon as Bradley AA as my author name um, also not amazingly so I think Heartmender probably comes up with the book awesome uh, if yeah. you want if you want it it's not great but leave me a review alright I don't have a massive internet presence I could plug my friend Lisha she makes music go look up Waste of My Time she makes good music <laughs> there you so, go yeah, if I get a message from her camera. going what did you do <laughs> <laughs> this was successful no well, thanks for coming down thank and, you very uh, much for having thank me thank you sir yeah bye bye goodbye Action!